Hello friends, welcome back to Scientific Blunders, where you learn the don'ts first. Um, so today we're going to kickstart a new series on machine learning. And this is inspired by the current AI boom. And I'm just unable to resist the temptation uh, to do something related to that. And today we're going to start with one of the most basic machine learning models, uh, linear regression. And it's often considered really simple. But when I first learned it, I realized that there were actually a lot of details involved and that if studied deeply enough, it is actually a very, you know, there's mathematically a lot of details involved. So today we're going to do something that hopefully um, in the spirit of the channel, uh, you know, gives us a deeper insight into what not to do when using linear regression. So let's get started and we'll start off with the classic housing prices example that um, most people who start learning machine learning do. And so let's say this is the data set we have, right? There's the number of rooms, the number of rooms, um, okay, which is one column or one feature in machine learning dialect. And let's say the, there's the area of the house. Right. These are the input features and using these, we want to be able to predict uh, the price. Okay. So this is very simple conceptually. And let's say we have, let's start off with a very toy, simple toy example. Okay. So let's say the first data point, we say there's a house which has one room and an area of a uh, hundred square feet. Okay, so let's say if you want to be particular about the units, this is in square feet and the price is, uh, let's say 1500, you know, this could seem unrealistic. You could just say this is, you know, hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, but doesn't matter really. So let's say the price is $1,500. Um, the second data point tells us that there's another house with two rooms, uh, and an area of 200 square feet. And that has a price of, let's say, 2700. Okay. Uh, let's say there's a third data point that tells us that this is a house with three rooms and an area of 300 square feet and a price of $3,800. And there's a fourth room uh, with an area of 400 square feet and a price of 40, let's say, 900. Okay. These are just, you know, random numbers that I just chose just for an example. Let's also give us some space in between. And so the first thing you, the first thing we want to do is let's, let's forget about what model to choose, but we see that as the number of rooms increase, um, as the area increases, the price also increases somewhat in a linear fashion. Okay. So that gives us an idea that maybe a linear regression model. Uh, is one possible model uh, to fit the data. And so what one might do um, is, you know, to represent this in more compact notation. So let me just scroll down a little bit. To represent this in more compact notation, um, one might, you know, call this, call the input matrix A, and one might call this, uh, this vector B. And you know, the linear regression model tells us we want to find an X such that, uh, AX can approximate B. All right. And it will not exactly match B, uh, if it's not a perfect straight line, but we want a model that can, uh, approximate B using AX, uh, or in more technical terms, we want to minimize, uh, the magnitude of the AX minus B vector. All right. So we want to minimize, and I'm going to use this notation for magnitude. We want to minimize. So we want to choose the vector X that minimizes the magnitude of AX minus B. All right. So what does X look like? Um, so one might be tempted to say, you know, X is just an X one and an X two. All right. And that is not wrong. But we usually want to add an intercept term, right? Uh, you know, a line is y is equal to mx plus c. 
and so we usually want to add an intercept term uh, to our linear model and so we usually end up adding another column of ones right and if any of these seems unfamiliar i totally encourage you to um, watch some linear regression videos because this is very standard right so this is sort of an intercept column and it's very standard practice to add add a column of ones to any data set uh, that you have okay and so now the matrix a has four rows and three columns it's a four by three matrix b is a four by one vector uh, which means the x that we need to find um, will have to be a three by one vector so there is an x3 as well so x1 corresponds to the intercept term x2 corresponds to the number of rooms x3 corresponds to the area and so we want to find x a three by one vector we want to find x a three by one vector such that you can minimize ax minus b so remember a and b are known right a is part of the data and so is b and x is the variable that we want to find such that you can minimize uh, the magnitude of the vector ax minus b so hopefully that was a good review of uh, linear regression now let's get down into the mathematics of how you actually minimize this and we choose a different color so to minimize, uh, so ax minus b, the magnitude of ax minus b is positive, right? So minimizing it is the same as minimizing the square of it because it's a positive quantity, all right? And so now, what is the square of the magnitude of a vector? So that is the same as minimizing um, the transpose of the vector times the vector right and now i'm going to use two simple identities uh, from linear algebra that a b the whole transpose is b transpose times a transpose that's one identity and the other identity is a minus b the whole transpose is a transpose minus b transpose okay and by the way a and b are general they have nothing to do with the a that a and the small b that I've assumed as part of the data. Okay, so now expanding this, so we want to minimize, we want to choose the x that minimizes. Um, so ax, the whole transpose would be x transpose a transpose minus b transpose, right, times ax minus b. So I've just kept, I combined, I used both identity one and two to get from this step to this step. And then expanding this a little bit more. So we want to minimize over all x, um, x transpose a transpose a x minus x transpose a transpose b minus b transpose a x plus b transpose b. All right. And um, for those of you who have done this a few times, I'm sure you've already recognized um, that these two terms are actually the same, right? B is a vector, AX is also a vector. So B transpose AX, right? So this is the dot product of two vectors. Um, that is going to be the same as, so X transpose A transpose is actually AX the whole transpose, correct? By identity one. Uh, so AX the whole transpose times B is the dot product of two vectors. And the order doesn't matter, right? So these two terms are actually going to be equal. So let me scroll down a little bit more. Uh, maybe, yeah. So we want to minimize over all, we want to choose the X that minimizes X transpose A transpose A X minus, so these two terms are equal. So let me write it uh, in this format minus two B transpose A X plus B transpose B, all right? And so this, remember X is the variable here, right? A's and B's are known. So this is a function of X. And what do you do when you want to minimize something? So the standard tools of calculus tell us that uh, if you want to minimize something, the first thing you do is take the gradient, the first derivative, which, you know, in higher, 
dimensions is the gradient um so this would be 2 a transpose ax minus 2 a transpose b right i know i'm skipping a few steps here maybe not going into all of the details but i would like to leave that um, to you as an exercise so that we can focus on the real learning here in this video okay so this is the gradient and you know to know whether we are maximizing or minimizing something we also need to find the um the second derivative or in this case the hessian so the hessian of this function um will just be 2a transpose a so remember b is independent of x and a is also independent of x so when you take the first derivative this term vanishes and when you take the second derivative this term will also vanish and this is always um positive semi definite right which means that um this is a convex function and so uh when you find the gradient and set it to zero when you set this to zero and solve for x you're finding the x then minimizes this right similar to how you know a positive second derivative indicates a local minima uh, a positive semi definite hessian uh, will indicate a local minimum right so when you set this to zero and solve for it um so 2 a transpose ax equals 2 a transpose b which means x uh, i'll use a different color for this which means x would have to be uh, a transpose a the whole inverse times a transpose b and this my friends is the closed form solution as they call it so linear regression being a very simple model has you know closed form solution and by that i mean an actual equation to find the value of x so more complex machine learning models will not have the same um but now this is really useful because we can actually implement linear regression from scratch now uh, right so we started off with this data set correct a simple four data set just four points and now we actually found the value of x uh, that minimizes the magnitude of the ax minus b vector all right so let's quickly code this up and see if we are able to find x using this method so let me first just import uh the necessary libraries and then we start off by we start off by just uh defining what a is according to how we defined it right so the first row is 1 100 the second row is 1 2 200 the third row is 1 3 300 and the fourth row is 1 4 400 and this is this was a so let's just make sure a looks like it is here so 1 1 100 1 to 200 so this looks fine and b is np dot a uh 1500 2700 3800 and 4900 so now that we have defined a and b uh we can actually go ahead and just try to compute x So what was x here? Um, x was a transpose a inverse times a transpose b. So x equals and this is how you would compute the inverse. Np dot linear dot in a transpose a. So a transpose a inverse, and then you multiply that with a transpose b. Hmm. Why do we run into this error? maybe we did something wrong with our implementation of linear regression so this is where i would actually try uh, using the inbuilt uh, you know python's inbuilt library um, for linear regression or i should say sklearn's library um, so from sklearn dot linear model so let's use an inbuilt library instead of trying to build it from scratch because we just ran into an error so you imported linear regression and then what i want to do is fit the model 
so fitting is the same as solving the optimization problem or what is called a training in machine learning dialect so i want to fit the model uh, with a and b as the input data so this essentially solves for x and looks like it didn't run into an error so if i actually try to look at the x i just have to look at the coefficients so we actually found a number here okay using the same a and b that i that we used earlier uh, when we tried to solve it using the closed form solution that we got we ran into an error but um, when we use python's inbuilt library somehow it worked fine why is that so i encourage you to pause the video here for a second and think about this because this will really help you get a good understanding deeper understanding of linear regression so hope you are done thinking about the video um what we need to understand is let's go step by step uh so we started off with let me scroll up a little bit so we started off with ax minus b and to minimize that we you know first we expanded this and then we set the gradient to zero we also found the hessian to make sure we're minimizing it right so everywhere anywhere uh, along all of these steps did we do anything where we could lead to an error so if you look at the error here it's a linear algebra error right so it's a singular matrix so what do you think the error is uh, that we did here so a singular matrix is one that cannot be inverted right and the only place we are actually inverting a matrix is when we are trying to invert a transpose a okay so now that gives us a hint into what might have gone wrong um so let's go back to what a was so this was the matrix a right so the first column was ones the second column was 1 2 3 4 the third column was 100 200 300 and 400 so do you have any idea as to why um this might a transpose a so this was matrix a and why a transpose a was not invertible well i'm sure some of you found this out uh, and this was actually by design but you see columns 2 and 3 are actually a linear multiple of each other all right and for those of you who remember determinants um whenever um all of the columns have to be linearly independent uh, in order for the matrix to be invertible so now if two columns in the matrix a are linearly dependent then a transpose a will also have columns that are linearly dependent uh and that means that a transpose a will not be invertible right so that is the problem we ran into here right that a transpose a was actually not invertible and so you could not find the optimum value of x now when we use the inbuilt linear model uh why do you think it worked so the you know existing machine learning models are really sophisticated because they are designed to handle all of these edge cases all right uh so in reality if we use a simple a simple calculation that we just did to find x um this might work if a transpose a is invertible um but sometimes it may not be but um i can only guess so i haven't done in depth research into how exactly sklearn's model works but it's designed to handle all of these edge cases for example if you look at the coefficients so x x2 and x3 right this is x1 x2 and x3 x2 and x3 vary exactly by a factor of 100 and that's uh, that's what we observe even in the columns of the matrix a so column 3 is 100 times column 2 so i one could guess uh, that what might be going on inside of sklearn is that they temporarily uh, discard one of the columns in matrix a and then maybe they use uh something similar to what we did here to find the optimum value of x and then they add on the third um the third element of x uh, to just be 100 times the second element of x um so the bottom line of this video is that even though linear regression looks so simple and so easy uh, there's actually so much detail that goes into it uh, so even you know deriving this required some knowledge of um linear algebra and calculus Uh, and so even though you're just fitting a linear model to a very simple data set there's actually so much that actually happens behind the scenes and these um existing models are actually very advanced because they are 
designed to handle a lot of the edge cases that you know something that uh, that cannot be done very easily using a simple calculation that we just did so hopefully next time whenever you use uh, sk learns model you are a little more aware of uh, the complexities and how it's designed to handle all of the edge cases and hopefully this gives you some motivation to understand um, the mathematics behind these models as well so with that i will see you in the next video bye